the heart of El Monte City Hall West, it's El Monte Tonight with your host, Arturo Esparza. Tonight's guest star, the divas of the Eastside Sound. And I'm yours truly, Jamie Neary. Out of control room? Go ahead, take it away.
Okay, welcome everybody once again. This is Almani tonight coming to you live from California with feedback included. Okay, <laughs> and I'm your host Arturo Esparza. I want to thank everybody last week that helped us with the Christmas show. I want to thank the families came on down and all the good people, uh, the superintendent of the Almani Union High School District, Ms. Salerno, and the CEO from the Chamber of Commerce, Ken Roush, good friends of the channel and our community. I want to thank the city for this okay this is a fantastic show it's our last show at the end of the year and i'm really excited because you know uh <clears throat> my good friend audrey guzman you know they yeah, said a round of applause for audrey <laughs> if you can't applaud for at least applaud for the donuts she brought okay <laughs> she came all the way from bakersfield and she came up with this real crazy notion and said hey why don't i bring all these divas on the show so we have the divas of the east side sound because all too often, as we do shows, it's a man's world, unfortunately. Uh, a lot of these women that are, contribute to the sound are usually like brushed aside or left in the background. And what we want to do is want to highlight them. Because you know about our channel, we're all about empowering the young ladies out here. And let me tell you, never has there been a collection of finer, more talented young ladies I've ever had on my set here. Going back to Eastside Prime, then back in East Los, but here in Almani, beautiful Almani that we love. And uh, we have, let's see, okay, I'm going to go down the line. We got Vanessa Hernandez. We got Arlene Mendoza. We have Kui Kui. I love that name. Let me say it again. Kui Kui. <laughs> That's so good. It's like chasing the evil spirits. Eh? Kui Kui. Kui Kui. Okay. So, and, we have, and we have Alma Gonzalez. Let's get a round of applause, please. <laughs> okay. So we're getting that. Now, I know uh, Diego asked him for some monitor, and he's all scared because it's starting to feed back, but just the way we roll around here on Almighty tonight. Okay, so the whole purpose of this is just to find out who these young ladies are and what's their history. So we'll start, we'll turn it over. I feel like a panel discussion. <laughs> Contestant number one, <laughs> Vanessa, tell us a little bit about yourself and where you hail from and how you got into this horrible business. Of horrible, horrible business. Okay, um, I hail from the city of La Puente, currently residing in Whittier. Um, I got into this business actually by accident. I mean, most people know that my mom actually sings uh, with a really well-respected band called Chico, and she's not the one who got me into this industry. You know, actually. we had we had I mean, we must have had your mom on the show back in Eastside Prime Time in East LA. We had Chico on there. Oh, okay, so then you probably had her on there. Yeah, who would have known? Huh? I know the, the generations. Family. I know. There you go. That's cool. You know, <laughs> she was actually against me singing. <laughs> mm -hmm. She's like, you don't want to get into that, and I was randomly I don't even want to say discovered. Just randomly ran into this awesome friend of mine who's a singer, amazing singer. I was dancing on the dance floor. You can he, mention names, it's okay. Oh, okay, Dominic Pantoja. Uh, he sings uh, with another band, the real band now. And so he was with another band at that time, uh -huh. saw me dancing. Uh, he's really social guy, likes to dance and have a good time. I'm a real social girl, likes to dance, have a good time. So he heard me singing, he said, you know, he heard me from the stage, I was down on the dance floor, you know. Good, good place to be dancing. Yeah, exactly. Oh, on the dance floor, not <laughs> up on a table or anything. And so he overheard me, and he asked me later and asked me, who are you singing with? And I said, I don't sing with anyone. And then uh, he literally ran outside after me and asked me for my number. And uh, it's like, that's Wait. called stalking nowadays. <laughs> 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 you give me a day and know it's okay. But go on. Continue. And then he said, okay, we need to sing together. I said, okay, sure, not a problem. That's a good opening me. line. Right? <laughs> Let me run after you down the street. We should sing together. <laughs> And it, it happened. He introduced me to another friend, and that friend took me to my first gig, which was actually um, subbing uh, for another band up north at a casino. So I literally had to learn songs. And gamble. I know. And yeah, I did. It was hard. And drink. I'm just kidding. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we, don't tell me, we don't condone drinking in here. On the I didn't say channel. what. I didn't say what. Yes, I know that. But <laughs> we just want to warn people, because otherwise you'll end up being chased down the street and <laughs> asked to sing, okay? You know, so I had to literally learn their song list eight hours up going up north to catch Fantastic. Cause, cause and that's a, that started like what? How long ago? About four years ago. But now me and my fiance have our own band, Tease. Oh my <laughs> goodness. And your, is your fiance here? Let he me ask. He is here. Which one? There's like about nine guys here. Oh, they're, all yeah. they're all raising their hand. He's a, he's a <laughs> very handsome, strapping man. With they're the still people. raising their hand here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Let's sit for Andrew. Andrew's a good guy, man. I love him dearly, man, even though he's taking pictures for the FBI. <laughs> yeah. We know how that rolls. Eh? Well, that's fantastic. Are you, you guys are really enjoying it. I know I've seen you guys dozens of times, and we you guys are. do a great job. We've I been mean, blessed seriously. this whole year. 
No, you really have. And, and, and let me ask, uh, I know you have some events coming up. What's yes. coming up? Uh, tomorrow night, we're opening up for war. Mm -hmm. uh, Saturday, we're at Marty's in Tustin. And New Year's Eve, we'll be at the Hop. At the Hop? We'll be opening Lakewood? up at the, at the Lakewood Hop. Okay. Because I, I was going to say, it's an empty lot now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not the city of industry. Yeah, no, it's like she's in a car dealership. <laughs> Here we are. Yeah, go We're going to be selling cars. Just okay, there you go. And dancing on the table. That's so, right. <laughs> we love that, Mia. Well, you know, we're going to get back to you because, you know, we, have you, we had you on the opening video. And we also have uh, another video oh, of goodness. you. Tease when we are at, uh, I think it was Steve's Barbecue. Oh, goodness. With those, with those <laughs> disco lights going on and all this stuff. You know, don't feel bad. I was there with Rocky Padilla and had his... Um, parents' uh, anniversary, and that oh. place was so packed that I was like on top of his uncle's hand, right <laughs> trying to film and stuff, so you know. See, I'm on top of tables, you're on top of heads. That's right. Eh? Not a good company. That's what I'm saying. Hey, man, what can I say? <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to be ahead of the game. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see. Next, uh, next contestant, that's Arlene. <laughs> Arlene, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, um, get lost and get over it. I was born in Stelly. <laughs> that could be a movie. <laughs> She's good. Know, She's good. Well, anyway, yeah, born in Sally and currently living in Whittier. Okay. Got married two years ago. Uh, Roland Mendoza. He was with the Garcia brothers, Juancho Sanchez, and good friend. He was with them, and then he ended up marrying you. <laughs> yeah. A little freaky he, here, no, folks. He okay. he We're going to find out more about this, Roland. <laughs> <laughs> he literally took me off the shelf. That's it. You're done. <laughs> well, he's got, good, he's got discerning taste. Good judgment. Yeah. Good call. But uh, <laughs> how long have you been? Um, how long have you oh. been uh, in the business? Oh, um, <laughs> showing my age already. Yeah, that was that. a trick question. For <laughs> you. Okay. Take notes. If you're squirting it at home, it's uh, oh, geez, Arturo <laughs> three. Are you nothing? Okay. But I started actually my whole family. Uh, Willie. Uh, my brother-in-law, who's m uh, Susan and Willie, who are Livewire, and okay. their sons, Billy and Eric, who are... Which Livewire is a group, I believe, right? Yeah, Livewire okay. is it's a not, group. It's not their lifestyle. Uh, it, was a family <laughs> it was a family group. Okay. And Willie's the one that uh, got us all into the music when he met Susan. We were out of high school. and um, uh, About five years ago, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> and... Uh, so we all like branched off. I started I started doing lounge lounge lizards, you know, kind of thing, and then I got into a group called Sangria. Um, I remember them, Sangria. They're you know yeah. they're still around. Oh yeah. They're no, cool. I meant the liquor. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We do not condone drinking on Almani tonight, okay? That was just yeah. a joke. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah, Sangria for six years. A group called the Bop, um, with Livewire also. Um, uh, I had, uh, geez, there's been so many groups in the years. So okay. <laughs> I think she faded out on no, us. So no, <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, 10 seconds. A lot, of okay, fundraising, a lot of fundraisers, mainly lately, lot fundraisers by myself with my Janice Joplin. And, uh, well, you, so currently, you're, what you're trying to tell me is you're not performing with any set group. No, right I'm no, I'm bouncing around right now. Okay, well that sounds good. It's exciting, and I'll leave that to your imagination. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the idea is uh, the reason why I ask is because we're building a house band here for this channel for mm -hmm. our show. And if you're interested to try uh, coming around and help us out, maybe once a month, we'd really appreciate That'd it. That'd be great. Because we have uh, we're building the backup band, so it's you know it's really exciting. I got uh, a couple of uh, musicians that are coming on board, so it's going to be a real exciting project. Because any band that we bring here to Almani and all the people out there, musicians, officially they become like the city band for Almani. <laughs> so when we have concerts in the park and all that stuff. We're down, you know. So it's good. So keep that in mind, okay? Yeah, I, I work with the cannibal. I was a cannibal at. Cannibal and the Headhunters. A cannibal let. Isn't that great? That is so cool. Is there a t-shirt that says that? I'm a cannibal let. <laughs> I was. We did backgrounds for Mickey Dolan's with Cannibal and Headhunters. At the, I met him, and this is a true story. I met him at the Alley Zoo in front of the monkey cage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I did. No, for real. No, I believe you. I, believe I met him there, <laughs> and we went into a tent, and he goes, you don't remember this song? I'm like, ah, of course. I was a monkey Beatles, you know. And he started strumming his, his guitar, and I wish I had those pictures. I keep calling him Beto, who was now the leader of, of Cannibal and Headhunters, for those pictures, because I I'd never seen him. And me with, in the tent with Mickey Dolan's just us, and he's strumming his guitar right and on the spot. But I already knew, because I knew the monkeys. I used to watch the show, so I already knew the backgrounds, and I was just so starstruck. He glowed. He literally was glowing. <laughs> <laughs> and so we went up on stage and we did we did our thing with Mickey Dolan's at the he, um, Alley he, Zoo. And he didn't run after you and ask you to sing, did he? <laughs> <laughs> that seems to be a recurring theme here. 
<laughs> well, I don't know, you know. You no, know. he was just excited that I knew all his songs. Come on. No, of course I knew all the monkey songs. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, now this is a true confession. Um, <laughs> with Cannibal and the Headhunters, I'm going to start up a little controversy. Is that which Cannibal and the Headhunters is it? Uh, this is the one that owns the name. Okay, I want to know because we know we yeah. had Robert Zapata on the show. That's he, well, he's in he now he's got uh, yeah. Well, Robert Zapata was on drums. He okay. was on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I just want to know because you know we cause all kinds of you know trouble yeah. with him. We love doing that. Yeah, we love Robert. <laughs> Seriously, we love uh, seeing him get a, you know his vein popping out of his neck. <laughs> yeah, it's well, exciting. he owns he owns it. When Frankie when Frankie passed, unfortunately, he hadn't the doing was in patent, so Zapata took over. Eddie Serrano took Frankie's place and. Um, left Serrano didn't patent and he passed away, he rested soul. And so B Bethel just jumped in and he gets mine now. You know. Don't you find that fascinating how these bands, they, you know, you end up like uh, Cannibal and the Hanners 1 and 2. Uh, when the Salas brothers were apart, we had, you know, Tierra and then you had uh, Steve Salas Steve from Salas, Tierra yeah. and, man, and we have two wars. <laughs> Two we have uh, the original yeah. lowrider <laughs> band, and then we have war. We have war with them. Yeah, so, you know, that's really yeah. great. You know, so you know, uh, more the merrier. What can I say? Hey, Frankie yeah. would sit there and show me. Literally, I was so close to the Beatles and so far. He would sit there and show me the pictures when he toured with, when, when the Cannibal and Headers, Headhunters toured with the Beatles. Yeah, they uh, opened up the, for them. Yeah, they opened up for them, and he showed me these pictures. I'm like, ah, ah. I mean, <laughs> what? How, that's the closest I've ever been to the Beatles, being with somebody Looking who actually was Looking at their pictures, okay, are they, I don't know about <laughs> you there. Look at their pictures and she started screaming, okay? <laughs> well, you know, he said it's Paul this McCartney. One, this one gets stalked and she don't care. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll give you a number, I'll sing with her. This one looks like pictures, ah! <laughs> no, Paul McCartney would wake him up saying, nah, 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 nah. There you, you go, see? That? Yeah, I heard this, yeah, you know, I didn't realize, I never knew what the origin of that song was, but then uh, Robert told me the, you know, the... 411 on that and mm -hmm. he said he said it was that the the sound was kicking out mm -hmm. so it just sounded like he was saying nah 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 no nah. he forgot the words actually that's what i heard see that's what i'm saying yeah. i heard two different stories no, I, I heard it from uh, frankie's mouth okay <laughs> what i'm gonna do i heard it from frankie's <laughs> mouth and he kept saying nah 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 yeah okay what we're gonna do is i'm gonna bring you back on the show with robert sabata and then we'll punch it out what do you guys think <laughs> <Be fun. laughs> i love hearing that man then, then robert will, you know he'll have a you know a he fit. knows a story i know he does <laughs> Well, that's fantastic. Okay, uh, next uh, is Queek Wee. One more time. Queek Wee. Queek Wee. Queek Wee. Queek Wee. I love that. Round of applause. Such a, such a beautiful young lady, I tell you. Thank you. You're such a handsome young man. Oh, that's good. I love when we lie on television. <laughs> it's so great. <laughs> it's so great. It's a pleasure being here. Well, thank you, sweetheart. Tell us a little bit about yourself, your little background, and where you hail from. Well, I was born and raised in um, L.A. County. Raised in L.A. Okay, can we narrow LA? it down a little bit? Or? Yeah, Los Nietos. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Okay. People call it Whittier, but okay. I'm from Los Nietos. <laughs> yeah. Which is now industrial, by the way, if you guys are mm -hmm. out there. And um, actually, in high school, junior high and high school, I was a ham. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and I really didn't get into the business seriously at that time. I just would hang out with my older sisters and... You know, and just go to wherever they would go or have their parties at the house, and there I was, the little sister hanging out. And then um, I left LA to go to school in Northern California. Oh, where'd you go? Uh, it was a school called DQ University, it was dedicated to the Native American. Oh, in yeah, Chicago. yeah, I've heard of that. That's up there, um, isn't that where all the. In Davis, yeah, outside Davis. of Davis, California. Yeah, up there where they grow everything, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, not that far up. Oh, that, okay. <laughs> So there I, I studied um, dance, uh, the, just the different uh, indigenous cultures and the Mexican culture, and I studied folklorico and Aztec dance and got into um, acting, and uh, finally I got into singing. But I was still very shy to sing for what, I don't know, even though I was a ham, I was just, when it came to singing, I was shy. So my dance <coughs> teacher tricked me into singing did he chase you down the block? No, okay, no. I want to make sure. <laughs> well, they chased me to come back in to sing. <laughs> no, oh, okay. I'm just <laughs> a lot of stalkers out no, there. No, I mean, it's, that was like my first experience to actually sing in front of an audience. It was at this little mom and pop club when they were raising money, and I was one of the dancers with the folklorical group. And um, the guy says uh, the band was on break, they came back. And it, this was all in Spanish, and was, I only knew one song in Spanish at the time, because it was my only song I knew. Right. 
and um, he, they say, okay, everybody, now we're going to bring up some singers. And I said, oh, this is going to be good. I get to see some professional singers. And you're and it, right? And they say my name, and I'm all, you know, and my desk <laughs> teacher's in front of me. And she goes, you want to be in this business? Prove it, like that. And everybody's clapping. They don't know who I am or anything. So I get up there, and then he, he says, he says, ¿Qué quieres cantar? And I said, Sabor a mí? <laughs> oh, gee, <laughs> I can barely even say it. My knees were knocking. My lip was quivering. He <laughs> says, ¿Qué tono? What key? And I said, no sé. I, I didn't even know what key. I didn't know anything. And he goes, okay, cuando hago así con la guitarra, empieza a cantar. So he said, when I do this, start singing. I said, está bien. So I started singing, Sabor a mí. And then people clapped. I walked off. I sat down. And my dance teacher says, welcome to the world of entertainment. And I went home that night. I said, that wasn't too bad. It was OK. I felt good. So I continued from there. And just um, I, I was living in Northern California, the Sacramento area. Very beautiful and area. And I studied. Uh, actually, my f the first band was there. And it was bilingual, <coughs> English and Spanish. And What was the band's name? Well, we had no name. It was, it the band with quickly, it was called it? The Band With No Name. The band so with then no we name. put okay. it in the newspaper to have a contest for people to give us our name. And it just took forever, so we ended up naming the band uh, after the farm workers because we did a lot of events Benefits, for the farm right, workers. Yeah. And so it was the farm workers' band for a while, and then we were Freddie's band, which was the leader of the band. And then after a while, I decided I was like this big superstar, and I didn't know what I was doing. I just was a ham and like being on stage, and you know, with my sister, who was a very good entertainer as well, so there were three of us. And then I said, you know, I have to learn more. So I came back to LA and I realized how much I didn't know. And started studying and meeting a lot of people and just then became part of the circuit of m meeting musicians and then um, formed a group from the 80s. We were pretty popular called Califas. Oh, well, I remember, back yeah. Back in the day. Was, yeah. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. Were well, you like three years old or something? Um, I was two and a half. Oh, I knew that. A child <laughs> prodigy. I've seen that before. You know? It is. And then just through the years, I've worked with different groups, and I've had my own groups, and met a lot of wonderful musicians and vocalists, like these lovely ladies yeah. that are here today. And um, now I'm working on my second CD project. Well, good. Yeah. You know, we'd like to, you know, I extend the offer to you as well, if you want to come on our show and maybe Thank perform. You. We'd love to have you on here, because you know, we like promoting the, the talent that's out there, because you know, it's, it's a, it's a, it transcends cultures, OK? Transcends boundaries. We're talking about the universal language here. And there's a lot of people, and there could be these, and here's the beautiful part. There could be these little kids watching this, and maybe one day, you know, there'll be a, the next Selena will be coming out and saying, hey, I remember I saw those ladies up there, man. They can do it, you know. That's true. And that's the way it works out. Well, you know, we love having you on here. Now moving on to uh, Alma. Alma, tell us your story. Hello. Uh, well, my name's Alma Gonzalez. I was born in Sunnyside, Washington, and um, we, uh, my family migrated uh, to East LA when I was about five years old, and I say migrated because my parents were migrant field workers. Oh, okay. Migrant field workers. Um, there was a lot of, you know, a lot of call for, you know, farm workers down here in LA. The uh, well, they worked their way down. Oh, okay. You know, down the, <laughs> they, you know, down the road, down, you know, right? wherever, yeah. wherever they, were, they had fields, you know, asparagus. Yeah. Cotton oranges. See, I, I grew up in East LA, and when you talk about picking, we're talking about picking people's pockets. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that's another story. But I'm sorry, go on. I digress. Um, I started singing, I would say, like in uh, school choruses, school talent shows in elementary. I was about nine years old, I would say. Um, didn't really, I, I come from a, uh, an, I would say, an abusive background uh, from my mother, you know, uh, putting me down all the time. So oh, I had okay. a really low <coughs> self-esteem. Mommy dearest, huh? Yes, okay. so something like that. Yeah. And uh, from that, going on to an abusive uh, marriage. Uh, where I was not allowed to express myself in any kind of way, not even uh, singing or anything. Um, it wasn't until I got out of that marriage and uh, was a single mom of uh, two kids. Um, I really wasn't into, into the music scene at all because um, it was mostly about raising my kids. Right. Um, I started singing with the band, I would, I would say in the early 90s. It was uh, with heavy traffic and then full circle. None of us really took it seriously. It was mostly for fun. Uh, whenever there, there was a party, a private party, oh, right. let's get together, let's practice, let's, let's do this party. Okay, no problem. 
um, once the party was over, it's everybody go their separate ways. Everybody had small kids at that time, so that, that was their main priority at that time. Um, I didn't take it uh, seriously until 2007 when I joined Connection, okay. the band. I was with them for um, almost three years, and uh, we broke up. Then I went into um, the band called Touch. And uh, currently, I'm with uh, Freddie G and the Smooth Response Band. Oh, okay. Yeah, we uh, we videotaped yeah. them all. Well, back. Yeah, round of applause. It's okay. <laughs> it's a great band. Very great band. We uh, we videotaped and, uh, them, I believe, uh, at Next Taste of Texas mm -hmm. just uh, recently, a well, while well back. And uh, Freddie is uh, the leader of the band, also my fiance as of as of yesterday. About yeah. time, stepped up. Up. <laughs> Another one off the shelf. See? And then, you know, and we have a, see, we have it recorded now. You can't back out, dude. That's it. <laughs> you know, we, got the, we send the copy to our lawyer after this. You know, <laughs> just in case. Documented. That's it. So that's where I'm at at this point. Oh, and, that's fantastic. Uh, I'm having uh, you know, the time of my, my life meeting a lot of talented musicians, um, getting to know these lovely ladies and the ones that are sitting out there that are waiting to come up here. Yeah, see how she said that? The, <laughs> these lovely ladies and the ones that are sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> and the other lovely okay. ladies. Oh, okay, very good. Waiting just their turn. Want to make sure you're under oath. Okay. <laughs> Your Honor, she's being purposely evasive as line of question. <laughs> uh, I want to deal with her as a hostile witness, okay? <laughs> no, but that's great. Uh, you know, it just it, it's so inspirational to know that, you know, you ladies have, you know, stepped up stepped out of you know your comfort zone if you will and go out there and just you know provide that kind of music you know and entertainment that delights all of us i know that you know it was myself uh you know that's why uh, many years as we did the studio over in east l.a old, uh, the old buena vision fun factor as we called it we covered a lot of the groups we covered them at the hop we got them at different events and stuff and uh like i said it, it's such a delight which you know i'm trying to segue because we're going to bring jerry up in a little bit and we're going to cut away to her footage Oh, mama. Yeah, because we got to get her up there. You know, she is the, the dean, if you will, of the diva clan here because we have <laughs> stuff on her from way back. Oh, yeah. I was I had the pleasure of being back around to one of her shows oh, at the you, hop. Uh, she's my awesome. sister and I. And she I had used so to rock out to her songs too, yeah. and I was like. In her crib, what? She was about to say that, okay? No, no, I was like, <laughs> I, I was like, I was going to say my crib. I used to rock no, out. No, no. Jerry's my second mom. Listen to the music. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> She's like my second mom. I love Jerry. Oh, I Jerry's Jerry. adorable. Are you kidding? Yes. That's why I've saved these videos like forever. In fact, actually, we have them on the big three-quarter inch, which they don't make anymore. And uh, when we first recorded them, and I have the whole concert uh, from two different angles. So, you know, we saved it, and I was, I was scrambling like, you know, madman trying to find that some of that footage for her because uh, it's just been a delight watching that. We saved it over the years, you know. I'm sort of an archivist of Chicano talent, you know, being uh, the person that started uh, Winter Vision back when, our first studio, and now I've been blessed here in Almani to do another studio, you know, and I started the legal interns, one of the kids went on to, uh, uh, he's the, the big head honcho over at Mundo 2, over for Univision, and he started right. with me when he was 17, uh -huh. and of course everybody knows Mr. Duran, he was our cameraman, and otherwise one of the producers at the time, he started up with that, you know, and he's still going strong, so you know, we got a few people out there, you know, and if you watch Channel 7, Sid Garcia was another one we helped out. Uh -huh. you know, that guy, um, he uh, came to us and he did our sports show. So, you know, it's a very important that we maintain the continuity and the kind of cultural respect, if you will, of what is about going on. And part of it, and part of it, and a big part, is our female contribution of the culture to the arts. Okay? Uh, one, one professor once told me it's like a rope. When you have rope and it's intertwined by itself, it's weak, but when you mix them both together, it becomes doubly strong. And that's what it's about here. You know, and uh, you guys are doing fantastic. You should be proud of yourselves. Seriously. No, really yeah, cool. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Except for you, because you talk to strangers. <laughs> <laughs> you talk to strangers. Did you know that everybody? You should talk to strangers, you know? They can just say, hey, I want you to sing here. <laughs> and here's some candy. Friends, <laughs> friends start off as strangers, right? Yeah. Well, Everybody's a stranger at one point. Yeah, and some people just end up being strange. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that goes. And with that happy note, we're going to cut away to some uh, Jerry footage here Ooh. on Almani tonight in the heart of uh, Almani, California. want to thank everybody once again, too, the City Council, all our good friends out there, and City Hall West for allowing us to do the show here on a weekly basis. As we go into the new year, we expect a lot of exciting things. So out of control room. That's what we call it. <laughs>